1969, on a July hot summer's day, Neil Armstrong stepped out of the lunar module and became the first man to walk on the moon. A live television broadcast was being transmitted throughout the world in order for all countries to be able to participate in this momentous occasion. The famous photograph of the first footprint on the lunar surface has become something that has transcended culture and race and people. And when I found out that Ethics had released a motor called the Moon Boot, I simply knew that I was going to have to try it and see if it lived up to my standard of what that motor should be. Now, in that little clip, you saw the Speedmaster Professional. Uh, in the 1950s, NASA engineers famously did a competition in secret. Um, and they traveled to many different jewelry stores throughout the Houston area where NASA Johnson Space Center is located, purchased a dozen or so watches from various companies, Rolex, Omega, Tag Heuer, Bulova, etc because they needed to find a timepiece to be able to send those astronauts into orbit that would continue to function in zero gravity. You see, the automatic watch had been invented by then that winds on your wrist using the movement of yourself to wind a tiny little mechanism inside that is self-winding. But they didn't know if those type of mechanisms would work in zero gravity and of course in the lower lunar gravity of the moon. Uh, the Omega Speedmaster Professional was selected and it is actually a watch that was originally developed for racing. The tachometer complication, which is the additional function on a watch, is meant to be able to time things like racing laps, but it is a fully manual winding watch. It was then and it still is today. And they have been, began putting the inscription on the back saying flight qualified by NASA for all men space flight missions, the first watch worn on the moon. And this was on Neil Armstrong's wrist. They actually used a uh, NATO strap, kind of like this one, it was probably actually a Velcro strap, a very large one to be able to fit around a gloved suited space suit or uh, MMU. And I myself uh, had been wanting to obtain this timepiece for a number of years because I worked at Johnson Space Center in Houston starting around the age of 17 for a number of years in the automations and robotics division. So anything space, uh, and particularly moon related, is always a fascination of mine. And when I got these Ethics moon boot motors, I was extremely excited. By one, the styling of the Ethics products is always a cut above pretty much anything else that is out there. And it, of course, it has that famous moon print photograph emblazoned on the bell. And it is a gigantic, 2407, 2200 KV motor size. And they've actually come up with an alternate KV that is a little bit lower, that's meant for success, but I already run success. So I plan to run that thing on success regardless. Uh, I got these before the new KV came out and I just plan to put on a throttle cut and push the iFlight Success 20 by 20 stack to the limits and utilize them on this incredibly outstanding space grade marmot frame of course so i got the space grade marmot i got the ethics moon boot motors this is finally a combination that i've been looking for so i needed to build up a personal hd rig for myself and i wanted an armatan design because i wanted to have not a dedicated camera tpe mount but a shelf i could just strap various size cameras onto easily um, so I decided to build this up very close to one that I sold to a customer. So uh, I'm using the Success 20x20 stack in here 
and I wanted to push this stack to the limits. I really enjoyed that build. Makes for a really nice clean build. I'm gonna show some close-up shots of that. But I went with the Ethix motors. The Ethix Ethics, I guess it's Ethics. I'm not really sure, but this is the Moon Boot. Oh man. Now, um, when I saw that Ethics had made a Moon Boot motor, I and I saw the design. I mean, this is such an attractive motor for, for a lot of us, for our quads. If you used to be a car guy, the motors are kind of like the wheels of your, of, your, uh, of your quad and you want to be looking stylish. And these are probably the best looking motor I've ever seen. They're not all colorful. It's sort of a earth copper tone at the top, black bell, very classy looking. The motor bell base has a sort of slightly different design, which allows for some extra screw grab, and but that has the top of the bell a little bit higher, so you don't have to worry about getting motor, motor screws on there. This is a Konasty design. Uh, I believe if you've ever watched his channel, Eric Konasty was the designer of these. I really think that nowadays with 6S, 4S, 5S batteries floating all over, um, that there are gonna be more and more motors like this. I believe this is truly a multi-purpose motor. At 2200 kV, it can be a 4S motor. Um, and it can also be a 6S motor if you put a nice throttle cut on there. So I mentioned that 20 by 20 success stack. It's a very nice budget, neat stack. I wanna push it to the limit. So I'm gonna run this thing on 6S with these gigantic motors. They are beautiful and spoiler alert. Yes, I've already flown this many, many times. I've uh, been using this to test out the box too. So if you saw that video, this is the quad that I'm flying in those videos. And wow, wow. Wow, wow. I have never flown any quad, freestyle, racing, whatever, where when I put the action camera on there, usually a session, but in this case, the box two, that I could really fly it without feeling that extra weight of the camera. You always feel like you're just not able to do the maneuvers that you're used to doing um, with that extra weight of that camera on there. And so you can't really quite do the moves that you want to do. But with these, you can. I was running about 85% throttle max cut to keep things safe since this is an extremely high KV for a 6S motor, not to mention the fact that these motors are gigantic. So you could easily destroy a battery in addition to the cap that it comes with, I also installed a large 1000 uh, cap on the pigtail for extra protection. But man, I may just go ahead and get to the footage. Like I cannot begin to describe enough the power that these moon boot motors have. They really allow you to fly a, a heavy freestyle quad with a 6S battery and an action camera and feel like you're flying a toothpick. You feel like you're so light because the, the power is instantaneous. I didn't think that that was gonna be possible with any type of motor. And uh, I really, when these giant motors started to kind of come out, I didn't really know who they were for, what they were for. Now I know. If you're doing freestyle, if you're carrying an action camera, if you wanna be able to do the same tricks that you do without the camera, you need extra power. This is how you get it. Now, without an action camera, I really love a 2207 or a 2207.5, but that extra weight just gives you a little bit less freedom to perform those maneuvers. And when you want your freestyle footage to look good, when you want those tree gaps, when you want those split S's, when you want those power loops, to look perfect, you really need a high degree of precision and that extra power allows you to do it. It Nothing is good about a feeling when you're really trying to push a little harder because to compensate for that weight, 
it's unfamiliar and that can allow you to crash and it can make bad things start to happen so i'm blown away by these i i, I can't recommend them enough I know that in the popular sizes 2306 and 2207, you're starting to see a lot of premium motors come out. You're starting to see more and more often 25, 26, 28, $30 a motor. Well, if you're gonna pay that premium price, then one, get the amazing, beautiful styling that is included in this, and two, get the power. Get the power. Why are you paying $30 for a motor that has the same power as a $20 motor? get the extra power. Thanks guys.